During the height of the pandemic, music videos took a really interesting turn. Gone were the days of huge studio and location shoots, and Rebirthed was the art of crafting a low-budget DIY video. Artists like Glass Animals, Drake, and 21 Pilots all conceived and shot inventive music videos entirely in their apartments. Okay, Drake has an $100 million mansion, not an apartment, but, but anyway, other musicians did take advantage of the dystopian-like empty streets as cities around the world came to a standstill. And in my situation, I had the opportunity to shoot and co-star in a music video with my girlfriend that we shot entirely in my apartment, and this video ended up being the most viewed music video I've created to date. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through exactly how we made this music video come to life. Let's get started. In March of 2020, I got a message from my friend Andy Morgan, who's a director based in the UK, and he's also someone who I collaborated on many of my early music video projects with. He'd been in touch with an artist called PS1. Yeah, like the, the video game console. Anyway, he wanted to make a new video for his track, Fake Friends. And to pull off this idea with all the crazy lockdowns that were happening across the globe at this point in time, he needed to find a filmmaker who had his own camera and lighting gear, lived in a cool looking apartment with his girlfriend, and to convince them to be the willing stars of the whole video itself. So with my incredible DiCaprio-esque acting abilities and my girlfriend's very, very sensual Instagram feed, we knew we were the right people for the job. The themes of the song could be interpreted as trying to call attention towards fake social media personas that many individuals try to portray online. Having the most perfect body, flying to Bali every other weekend and swimming in the most gloriously blue ass water that you can imagine. Blue ass water. Holy shit. So we wanted to convey this for a couple with the girl slowly succumbing to the allure of influencer culture and her boyfriend being roped into assisting her documentation of this heavily constructed persona. After a few more brainstorming sessions with Andy and Henny via Zoom, we started to flesh out ways that we could build upon the events within the story structure. After we got the label's approval of our treatment, we put our shot list together, set the date when we would actually go about filming the video, and then we were ready to begin the shoot. The locations we used as the settings for our video included my bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room, and this glorious balcony. On the first day, we took it pretty easy by filming just a couple of shots for the two nighttime sequences that bookend this whole video. These included the opening shots, of Henny having the idea planted in her head of becoming an Instagram influencer and us watching her take her first Insta selfie before laying down in bed and falling asleep next to her boyfriend. We also captured the final shots of Henny in this video when she's in full influencer mode as she takes a selfie before going to bed all alone. To light the intro sequence, I had a practical bedside lamp switched on next to Henny. I then augmented this with a dado light that I had clamped onto the railing of our red curtains and I had another dado light on the opposite side of the bed, just bringing up the exposure on the shadow side of her face a little bit. The switch to moonlight was done in the color grading process because at first I did try to create this moonlight drenched bedroom aesthetic, but I couldn't quite get it to look right with the current lighting that I had at the time. So instead, I just wanted to motivate the whole lighting from the practicals that you can see in frame. Though Andy later changed this back to a moonlit aesthetic in the grade, and I honestly think it looks pretty convincing as if I'd actually lit it like that on set. Camera wise for this video, I was rocking the A7S II with a Tokina 20 24 to 70 millimeter lens on it for about 90% of the time. And the other 10% was with a 70 to 200 millimeter Canon L series lens, the big long white one that we're all very familiar with. One of the main things that we had to keep in mind throughout this whole shoot was making sure that we captured enough photos and videos with Henny's phone in order for our lovely VFX artist Katia to take these and turn them into social media animations that are used on screen. The whole video is based around quick vignettes of Henny either posing to camera or syncing to the song. And as the video progresses, we start to showcase how the relationship with her Insta boyfriend begins to deteriorate more and more. So for each vignette, after we captured the main shots of Henny either posing or syncing to the track, we would also capture photos and videos using the built-in filters and effects that Instagram has. We also set up a few slightly longer narrative sequences, including one where Henny is preparing a deliciously nutritious breakfast to photograph for her Instagram feed, and then she tastes it and she doesn't like the taste of it, so she just goes away and throws it in the bin. Which was really funny to the film because Henny actually wanted to eat that breakfast for real. In terms of how we lit this video, there's one shot in the final edit that pretty much shows all the gear that we used and that's these four lights right here. One one by one Aladdin LED bicolor panel, one Aperture 120D Mark II, and two tungsten dado lights. For most scenes, the goal with the lighting was to try to make the apartment feel as high key and natural as possible. With a stronger key light serving as the daylight, and then either my Aperture or Aladdin light 
bouncing against the ceiling to raise up the overall exposure in the apartment. Though in hindsight, I didn't really have powerful enough lights to sell this effect in every single shot, which means that in certain scenes when there wasn't actually enough natural ambient daylight coming in through the windows, the lighting looks a little bit too directional for me. Or rather, it just looks like that I actually have a softbox just out of shot rather than what the sun would actually do if it was bouncing light into the apartment. The pace of the edit is fast enough that I doubt most people would be distracted away from the narrative because of this, but it's certainly something that I as a filmmaker notice as an area of improvement that could have been implemented. Considering that myself and Henny were the only crew members on set for the majority of this video, I think we pulled off some pretty cool lighting tricks. For instance, with this shot, we needed to trigger a lighting change for when Henny comes in to distract me from reading my favorite book about pickup artists. And we didn't have anyone to help with switching on this light to trigger the effect. So the solution was to hold my phone within the book that I was reading and then whenever Henny was about to hit the button on the remote, I would trigger a TV flicker effect on the Aladdin app. If you look at the shot in slow motion, you can actually see the right side of the book move a little bit as I tap the effect on. Like the pickup artist book that I'm holding, there's also a few funny Easter eggs and details that most people wouldn't really notice. Like when we shot this balcony scene with Henny, the workers in the background were shouting to her, sarcastically warning her not to accidentally fall off the balcony. We also left in some extra narrative details in the back of this shot with Henny's clothing scattered all across the living room to show the progression of her messy Instagram life. For the breakup scene when my character decides that enough is enough in the relationship, we also cut out a whole shot that shows my character walking to a fully packed suitcase to then walk out of frame. I am a little upset that this shot didn't make its way into the final edit because I really liked how we let the shot run to reveal the suitcase just waiting for me in the corridor, but in order to keep the pace at the right energy, it it was better that it was cut out of the edit. This was also the only scene in the whole video that didn't have either the camera on a tripod or me behind it operating. As we enlisted the help of my filmmaker friend and fellow YouTuber Marton Caroy, who sneakily made his way over to my apartment in a taxi in order to avoid any of the lockdowns that were happening. We wanted this scene to feel different from the rest of the video with it being the culmination of this couple's relationship. So bringing in some subtle handheld camera movement and reactive pans was a way to help convey a different sensibility to this part of the video. We also approached our lighting with the same mindset of having it stand out from the rest of the video up to this point. So we kept things quite contrasty with a strong key light and very little fill towards the shadow side of both of our faces. Luckily we could motivate a lot of the lighting in the scene here from the practicals in the background, but actually most of the light that's hitting my face is from the Aperture 120D Mark II just out of shot with a softbox on. And a dado light acting as a backlight on me just to make me pop out a little bit from this slightly bland looking white wall. We also had my Aladdin 1x1 one panel dimmed down hitting the shadow side of my face just to bring up the exposure a little bit. For the reverse angle I replicated a similar lighting style but without the dado light hitting my shoulders as much as instead we had it rigged on a curtain rail above the desk here in order to match the direction of light the audience perceived coming from this desk lamp. I always love working with practicals because they do so much of the work for you already and then you just have to light it based on the position and where you would presume light would be coming onto your characters. Even before we officially released the final music video on the 19th of June, PS1 already had an official lyric video for this track on his YouTube channel and it already had over a million views. So from that number, I felt like our video could have the potential to do pretty well, but I honestly didn't really expect for it to hit the millions as quickly as it did. I remember just a week into our release, I was already getting DMs from friends and family saying that they'd either heard the song on the radio or they'd seen the video being played at the local gym, which honestly, it made me feel pretty good. Just the idea of random people all over the world going about their everyday lives to then glance up at a screen somewhere that's showing the video that we made with such a small crew in our Budapest apartment made me feel really proud of what we'd achieved. However, it is interesting to note that as much as I do like this video, I don't think it's the best music video that I've made, even though the view count is clearly the highest. As you can see here, this is a view ranking of all the music videos that I have showcased on my website and the years that they were released. If we were to put them in a ranking order based on a rating that correlates with how good I think each one is, it'd look like this. And even though a high view count should be applauded, there are just so many things that dictate this number that are ultimately outside of your control, including how popular the song already is, how big the artist is, how well the record label promote the release of the video, and how they go about doing this. I didn't even know this until a few weeks after the video was released online, but apparently the record label that PS1 is signed to had an incredible marketing strategy on Snapchat. So much so that people were complaining in the YouTube comments about 
how much they were just being bombarded by ads for this music video. I thought it was important to point these elements out to illustrate how there's not really a secret formula to make a viral video, as so many things can make or break this. Therefore, the only thing you can do as a creator and filmmaker is to plan and shoot the best video you can with the abilities and resources at your disposal. Before I end this video, I want to introduce you to a special guest whose balcony selfies have been seen by almost 4 million people at the time of recording this video. And that's my lovely girlfriend, Henny, who's right here. Come on in. So Henny, how does it feel to have uh, been in a music video that has millions of views right now? I didn't really expect this much views. It was definitely a fun, fun project to work with you and, and to film it. It was also cool to play a different girl and a different role as I am. Henny's nothing like the character that you've seen throughout this whole video. <laughs> I don't use that much social media and stuff like that. It was definitely fun to place myself in that girl's life just for a little bit. So doing all that social media scrolling and spending four, four or five days with me taking selfies didn't convince you that it's a good idea to do that on your own social spending, media presence? <laughs> spending time spending with you. <laughs> spending time with you didn't change. No, I believe if something is too much in anything in life, it's not good for you. And um, even YouTubes, so don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> but my videos That's doesn't fine. apply, it doesn't apply. Yeah, trying to pursue this fake, perfect image. Um, yeah, it's just not healthy. I'll get you in a music video with Drake in a mansion, like with alcohol and money and hot babes and hot good. guys next, good, good. just like. to just to counteract the 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 incredibly positive social message of this music video. If it was actually a music video about Henny's real life, it would just be a girl who does, does Spanish and has ten cats and paints and does procreate on iPad and goes for walks and lives on a beach. So. Oh, yeah. If there's any artists out there who want to pay for us to fly to all these countries to do that, well, I'll happily shoot you a video. <laughs> so thank you for joining me, Henny, as, as the special secret guest at the end of this. And if you want to see the full video, I've left a link to it in my description box below. And if you want to actually see how I go about editing music videos, you can check out this other video on my channel right here, which is probably covering Henny's face. So click on Henny's face to watch it. And thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.